this is Arthur Karmazi, best-selling author and currently ranked as one of the world's top 10 thought leaders in organizational culture and leadership. And welcome to the Experts MBA, the show for consultants, trainers, and coaches to basically build their business. Today we have a very special guest who is Chris Voss, a superstar podcaster. Now, of course, Podcasts are a very big thing because people listen to them all the time. They listen to them on their way to work. They listen to them uh, when they're bored. They listen to them just for the purpose of gaining new information. And Chris is a major influencer. In fact, he is one of the Forbes top 50 social media influencers. Um, and today he's going to tell us how he built his podcast. Chris. Hey, thanks for having me on your show, Arthur. I certainly appreciate it. My pleasure, Chris. So tell us, okay, what's your secret sauce for building a super podcast? Nudity. <laughs> nudity and lots of nudity. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, just to clarify one point, though, I have 400,000 followers across social media, not on the podcast oh. per se, but it get distributed to them. So, okay. uh, so hopefully they watch it, but I don't want anybody going, what the hell? Um, but thank you very much for the intro. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a rock star, but uh, whatever. I mean, four bucks and a cup of coffee will get you a star. I try and be humble through all my uh, megalomania and narcissism as much as I can. That's what my psychiatrist says. Oh, that's good. Um, or at least what I should try to do. So uh, thanks for having me on the show. In fact, it was wonderful to have you on the podcast, I believe, yesterday for, the, for our show. Um, the, uh, you know, how I got started in social media was back, it was kind of a necessity given the fall of our economy here in the U.S. Uh, in 2008, 2007. What's, what's the old, uh, there's an old adage or quote I'm thinking of that necessity is the invention. mother of invention. Necessity is the mother of invention, especially when you're living under a viaduct. Oh, uh, but I had several companies I built over 20 years. They all came to a screeching halt with the economy failure. One is one was a very big mortgage, and I was kind of left for the first time in my whole life working for myself uh, to uh, like, what do I do now? And everything we were trying, every business little venture we were trying, just wouldn't work because the economy had just come to a screeching halt here in the U.S. So I took and uh, started playing with Twitter. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just trade. I'm a salesman, a marketer. I've been a CEO owning my companies all my life. So for me, just being a big mouth, being a, um, being a person who's always talking to vendors, employees, uh, uh, our, our different, uh, you know, the board or whoever need to sell, shareholders, you know, I'm used to being a big mouth at communicating to everybody. And, and as a CEO, that's kind of where you end up as the communicator. So being a big mouth was, you know, it just kind of came as territory for me. So when Twitter started, I kind of found that, wow, I can press this button and send a tweet and suddenly traffic appears on my website and people start buying things. I'm like, this is really cool. So now I just get to get more people to press this button and for me to send out more tweets and voila, there's traffic going to the thing. And so I started doing that, developing it, and uh, of course back then it was the social media wild west. I think at one point before all the movie stars and rock stars came on board, I was in the top 1,000 people on Twitter, um, and I just figured out it was very it was a very simple format for me. Social media, it's media advertising marketing that's social. Um, it, it's not a hard thing to figure out. I don't know why people spend millions of dollars going, teach me about social media. It's media that's social. Um, and um, so what we took and do is uh, I built that over time, built my audience. I didn't know at the point what I wanted to do. Uh, so, but I knew I needed to have an audience to do it. So I wasn't sure what I was going to sell. And one day someone called me up and said, Hey, we noticed you're a rock star on Twitter. We'll pay you to come consult with us and teach us how to do it. And I'm like, what, you'll pay for this crap I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Like, uh, you'll pay for this? Uh, and so that's how I started consulting for that business and then building my brand, launching the Chris Voss Show, and then, of course, the applicable things out of it, mastering LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google Plus at one point in time. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, and then... Uh, 
And then of course, starting a podcast. So, uh, you know, it's just about, uh, I'm, I'm just an endless content creator. I'm a, I'm relentless. I'm a big mouth. And, uh, I don't know if that's made me successful or not, but, uh, you be the judge, I guess. All right. Well, so what kind of content do you think uh, people want to listen to? I mean, what are the, what are your, your best podcasts or what are your best, um, the things that people seem to be most interested in? One of the things that people are attracted to leaders and they like leadership and people like to follow leaders. They like to, uh, not only do they like to know what other people think, they like to f follow people that are um, engaging people that are charismatic, people that uh, are energetic, uh, people that are motivating, if you will. Um, I think all of us, uh, within our own nature, we we it probably have some sort of tribal, caveman sort of basis in, in our DNA to it. But we tend to look for leaders. Even me, in my leader position, I'm looking for leaders above me, um, and. And we're looking for information, but sometimes we're also looking for entertainment. There's a kind of a, a whole mixed bag that comes with what your audience wants from you. Some people just want entertainment. They want a couple of laughs. They want maybe some interesting insights. Um, and it, you know, it comes back to what's the old adage of when they first came out with TV and, and, and um, uh, John Kennedy and Nixon appeared on stage together and Nixon had always done radio. So Nixon just came off as dry uh, sweaty and just horrible on camera. Well, John Kenny was very good at it. People look for charismatic people to have be their leaders or to lead them. So for the most part, charisma, being entertaining, being funny helps. If you can be funny or at least trying to be funny. Uh, if you can't be funny, then just fall down a lot like uh, Chevy Chase on Saturday Night Live. Okay. So you're basically talking like leadership with nudity. Leadership with nudity. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I would advise that nudity, it probably isn't the best thing to do, especially if you look like me. But, uh, you, know, I, you know, a nice low cut top if you're a female can sometimes help your, help your online game. But, you know, uh, sex sells, but I, I wouldn't go full nude uh, as it were. So, uh, you know, I just, I just pump out content for the first while. There was a lot of uh, entrepreneurial content that I shared from my experience. And really, you just delve into your experience, the stories of your life. Um, there's, I, I can't remember who I was talking to. Maybe I was talking to you yesterday. But we love stories. We're all storytellers. And the things that we learn from life are stories and that's really what this is. When you go see a movie on Holly, uh, a Hollywood movie, when you go see TV, we, we're longing for these stories, and we learn from these stories, and we we feel emotion from the stories, and they encase us, and they make us feel alive. And stories really are what you're going to have at the end of the day of your life. You're going to remember all the great stories, and so being able to identify those and 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 be able to put them into some medium of output, whether it's by audio, video, or print with your blog, or maybe writing for a, a newspaper or whatever, is sharing stories, sharing what you've learned. I can't tell you how many millions of times, Arthur, that I've, I've been like, you know, I'm going to write a blog post about my dilemma right now, my dog dying uh, or having cancer, or I'm going to write a blog post about losing weight and the struggle that I'm going through. Or maybe I'm having an emotional struggle or a, or a mental, logical struggle with the concept or idea. And I thought, you know what? This is stupid. This is just self-serving. No one really cares about that. And then finally, I'll just be like, you know, I'm just going to write about it as a journal. I've kind of always used my social media as a journal. And I'll write about it. And what's amazing is I really help people who sometimes are going through the same journey, have been through the same journey. Um, you know, we're all going through these journeys and experiences of life and seeing somebody else who's having that sort of thing uh, makes you go, oh, okay. Sometimes those people can help you. Sometimes you help other people. When my, uh, my dog of uh, 16 years passed away, I went through a huge catharsis and I bled out a lot online emotionally and uh, logically what I was experiencing. Uh, I had people writing me going, wow, Chris, I spent the day crying. I didn't realize that when my dog passed or when maybe a family member passed, I never really processed it. I never really got closure. And so 
it's amazing how sharing what you feel, sharing your stories, sharing your life experience can really make a difference to people in some ways that you never even thought would, would be impactful. Okay, so if uh, we were going to uh, recreate this, okay, so if our uh, trainers, consultants, um, coaches would be able to re recreate this, they could actually talk about some of maybe uh, some of their own problems and, and what has led them to go into the industry or maybe um, how they personally had been coached or trained or something that they learned or you know, maybe emotional stories that kind of relate back to them. Would you uh, think that that would be the kind of content that people really like to listen to? Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, I, I, have a, I have a lot of experience with my businesses, with my life experience. I'm sure a lot of other people do. Some people have experiences I have experienced that would be new to me. Uh, sometimes I can help those people. But that's really what being an entrepreneur is. That's really what capitalism is. Capitalism is the basic widget that if you solve someone's problems and it's valued high enough that someone will pay for it, depending upon that value and the scarcity of it, uh, and the, the, it, it depends upon the value that the people will pay you for it. That's really what you do as an entrepreneur. Any great entrepreneur sits down and goes, wow, this bugs me. It's stupid. I'm going to make it different. And maybe if, I don't know, somebody else might like it. And voila, you find that a million other people like what you like and, and wanted that change and you fomented that for him. Okay. Now, what do you think? If you, if now, in, in my experience, though, you know, getting people to say, oh, I'm good at this and I'm going to, you know, fix this and I'm all this and, you know, I'm so awesome. Uh, I don't really think that works too well. So what we're talking about, uh, I, I think one of the key differentiators here is to be kind of real and honest and even kind of show your failure. Would you agree with that? Definitely. I've shown my failures online. I've talked about my failures. Sometimes I've talked about stuff and my failure has been that I have to dial it back and go, well, when I stated it was wrong, clearly, because my audience has corrected me. Um, and, and sometimes that's the process of learning is the sharing and then learning that, okay, that's probably not the thing to share. Um, you know, a good example that recently is Papa John's uh, recently having to resign. He shared some stuff that maybe he shouldn't have shared and uh, he's certainly paying a price for it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's not so much you really have to walk around going, I am the greatest expert in the world, blah, blah, blah. Um, just setting yourself up as a leader, sharing, talking, communicating. People are looking for something to listen to, something to lead them. And if you stop talking, they're going to go wander off and find somebody who will. So you've got a, you've got a um, you know, the one thing is, is you, you have a contract with your audience to give them great content to share with them your stuff. Um, and a lot of people, sometimes, you know, I share stuff that's out of the scope of maybe the consulting that I'm doing or the training that I'm doing, but it's just about life experience. And that builds a depth to it that makes it more important and valuable to everyone else that's in there. And like you say, being authentic is a super, super important part of your uh, obligation to your audience. Because once they find out you've been faking it or that you're full of crap, in your BS of what you know and you don't know, they will call you out and they'll move on. All right. And what, what would you say would be, how, how, do, how do you multiply that? So, okay, so you have great content, you're real, um, you know, you, you are a leader in, in, in your thoughts, you're giving ideas, you're, you know, solving problems or at least coming up with potential solutions, solve problems. But now, how do you get more people to actually get exposed to it so that they can essentially, well, see what to do. What's, what's next? How do you multiply that? So the beautiful thing about social media is a large amount of it is fairly free. You can take and use to build your audience. So what you do is you need to focus on creating content, whether that be, you know, uh, from whatever medium you want to do, video, uh, print, books, whatever. Uh, and then you need to focus on distribution. You need to go and share that stuff on your Twitter share it on Facebook, your Facebook fan page, if you need to set that up, Google Plus, if that was back in the day, YouTube, make videos for YouTube, and put medium up, uh, put your uh, mediums up there, so you can take and share, and constantly share, you can't just, like, I'll see some people that'll be like, I wrote a blog post, I hope it goes viral, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
I don't have the same people to do that with an app. I'm just going to build an app. We're not going to market it. I'm sure it'll go huge because it's a really cool app. No, you've got to, you could build the greatest thing in the world. You got to go out and tell people about it. So you got to go out and distribute it. If you're building a mastermind group, you've got to go out people, you got to go out and advertise it and tell people why it's great. Uh, the other thing that I think really helps is being a master of all mediums or trying to learn and be a master of all meetings, mediums. I've, I've gone and tried to master as best I can YouTube. I've gone and uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, you, you have to realize your audience is in a lot of different places and sometimes you don't know where your audience is going to really come from. Um, I've seen people that they're just like, I just focus on Facebook and I'm like, wow, you're missing a lot of C Corp business sort of people that are on LinkedIn. And so you've got to learn to be multi-platform, multimedia, if you will, in social media's world, because you don't know where your customers are going to come from and they'll come for the most obscure places. Uh, that you sometimes you won't even know. I've had people be friends of mine for Facebook and one day it turns into money. Um, and it's mainly because I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna go do this, I'm looking for sponsors, blah, blah, blah. There you go. And then you just have to be consistent. Every day you've gotta work on content creation and distribution, marketing, making sure it gets out there and people are seeing it. Excellent, all right. Okay, well, Chris, what one last bit of advice would you give an audience of trainers, consultants, and coaches to basically build their social media presence so that they become rock stars like you? Yeah, uh, focus on whatever you can to take and automate your workload. Um, the greatest thing that employers do is, and this is what you do when you're an entrepreneur, is you get other people to do the work for you. That's why you hire a virtual assistant and everything else. Same thing with social media, you find automators, it, uh, you put your content in, of course, you put them in with the love and care of a real person. You put them in the automators and they go ahead and share those. And then hopefully they're repetitive enough where they repeat your message and keep it going out there. Because you constantly have new people coming into your audience that are seeing your stuff and going, well, let's find out what this guy's about. And then they, they click on your link and then they find out more about you and hopefully you keep putting stuff up that keeps them engaged. Um, but then you also have people that are like, eh, I've seen enough of Chris Voss for... I've, I've heard him after his riff, I'm going to move on. So you've got to realize there's an attrition process that's constantly going on where your audience sometimes is moving on to something else and you've constantly got new audience coming in from your new content. So you just have to constantly be creating that stuff. But I would use any sort of automators. There's a lot of great services across the web. Socialoomph.com is one of the popular ones I use. Socialoomph.com? Socialoomph.com. Uh, there's, I think there's something called Flitter. I mean, if you, if you put in your social media thing, social media automation, you can find a whole wealth of different ones you can use. Uh, and using those systems, uh, I believe in something called saturation. I think if I was to answer your question, I would say saturation. Saturate the audience with your content. Keep it repetitive. Keep it updating. You even see where there are blog post uh, automators. Well, what they'll do is take your old two- and three-year-old blog posts and put them back to the front and repurpose them and recycle them. Even great bloggers like Chris Brogan, you know, he recycles his content because the problem is it gets kind of gets to the back and people don't see the back. You know, it's kind of like Google front page. They just read what's on the front page and that's it. They never go buy it. So bringing that content back can be repurposed, especially when you have this swirling audience that's constantly coming in and out with attrition. Uh, you're constantly seeing new eyes and marketing to new eyes and everything else. You've got to be wary of that. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you, Chris. And so, well, um, I really appreciate you, your uh, time uh, today, this morning, um, in uh, coming uh, online with me and uh, doing the show. And uh, with that, uh, thank you again and really appreciate uh, your wisdom on uh, how we can build better podcasts and social presence. Thank you. Okay, so with that, this is Arthur Carmazzi wishing you great success.